Hey, what's going on guys? Well, I got some viewers letters. So we're gonna be uh, opening these on camera and talking about them a little bit. So I have the uh, the Tough Knives Boker collaboration here. This is the War Toad. Did a review on this, not sure the order of how I'm posting these videos, but uh, definitely part of my EDC now, love the knife. So first thing I wanna talk about real quick is this letter, I can't show the front, because it has the address on it, but this got busted open. All right, now when you get something that comes through the mail and it gets ripped open, the post office puts it in one of these bags and you can read it there. It says, Dear Postal Customer, we sincerely regret the, dam the damage to your mail during handling, blah, blah, blah. Basically what happens is when you send a letter through the mail, they go through a machine and it has rollers and it's thin. So if you put something inside of a letter, like a keychain or a coin or something like that, um, and it goes to the roller, if it's too fat, it'll rip it open completely. And I've seen hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these, you know, when working with the mail and uh, you know, it stinks. It stinks because things get ruined, things get lost. You know, they, they clog the machine, they break the machine sometimes. There was an incident where uh, one of the, the sorters was down for like a month because someone shipped something in a letter, you know, and it just ripped it open and fell in the machine. But uh, anyway, so just a quick tip, if you guys are gonna send something if you're sending a letter, you can put it in an envelope, but if you're sending something that's fatter, it has to go into something like this, a padded envelope, because these do not go through that, that sorting machine. They get handled by hand, okay? Just quick reference, if you're shipping anything to anyone, don't put it in an envelope unless it's just a piece of paper. So anyway, we're gonna cut into this and take a look at what's inside. Again, I wanna keep everyone's information private. So actually, yeah, it's got a return address in the back, so I'm going to keep this off camera for a second here. This is coming from Sebastian, and I think it's from Belgium. It's kind of ripped, but it says open on camera. So hopefully I can read most of the message here. Let's see, all right, that should be it. Let's leave this other stuff for now. Okay. Uh-oh, I see. A dodo. I like your Spyderco Dodo. Me too. I wish I still had it. <laughs> this is the, the elusive Dodo. Um, you guys, most of you know the story with this knife, but I've had it, I got rid of it, I regretted it, got it again, got rid of it, regretted it, got it again. Currently don't have one. You know what that means is eventually, I need to get it again. Um, I love the blue one because it matches my pin, but I would love to get the black one. Uh, a plain edge black one would be badass, or even the uh, the orange one would be pretty cool. But I think they even come out with a, a carbon fiber one. So, cool picture, thank you for that. There's something bulbous in here. And that's what did it. Very cool little, little lanyard here. Um, I like it a lot, but unfortunately that is the thickness that did not go through the machine and rip the whole letter open. That's the culprit right there. So let's see, I can read some of this letter. It says, um, Dear Jeff, Cutlery Lover, just want to thank you for making awesome videos. Uh, keep up the good work. I'm 14 years old and, and I'm collecting knives uh, for over a year and I really enjoy it. I learn a lot from the videos about knives. I'm also getting into Zippos and I think it said I had something and Victorinox knives. And also Spydercos and some... I see the B and the umlaut, the double dots. So I'm going to make a safe assumption, I think, in saying he had some bokers and paracord key fobs. And the paracord buddy, I have something. I uh, hope you enjoy them. So maybe there was also the paracord buddy, which is like, uh, it's like a paracord shaped like stick figure kind of a thing, which is pretty cool. Unfortunately, I, that might have been missing. I don't know because the package was ripped open. But anyway, it says, loves from Belgium and happy Christmas. Your viewer, Sebastian. So I really appreciate it, Sebastian. Uh, it's unfortunate that the letter got a little bit, you know, damaged and, and stuff. I don't know exactly what was el what else was in this, if there's more paracord or not, but I appreciate this. This is very cool. And in fact, I am changing out my, my keychain stuff, so I might throw this on my keys. But anyway, thank you so much for writing. I really appreciate, you know, you watching the videos. It means a lot to me. Um, let's see, open another letter here. This one has no name on it, but it's coming from, uh, looks like Indiana. So let's open this. And I don't want to cut the table. So we're going to cut for this package here. Go for the sign. Okay. 
All right. Okay. Make sure there's no address on here. No, nope, no address. Let's make sure the envelope is empty. And it is. Okay. Dear Jeff, I collect Zippos and I have eight lighters. I wish I could find more, uh, but my hometown doesn't sell them in stores. If you're willing to trade a Zippo or two for a knife or two that would, or two that would finally help uh, out my collection. I really enjoy your videos on Zippos and um, Camden stuff, Zippos and random stuff. I would say uh, that you post. Thanks for your videos. And that is from Andrew. So thank you, Andrew. I appreciate your writing a letter. Uh, as far as like trades, I'm not looking to trade any Zippo stuff at the moment. Uh, I mean, you never really know, but I don't really trade out Zippos, even though I love knives and Zippos and stuff. I, don't, I mean, the Zippos I have, I actually do rotate them and use most of them. And I would say there's probably only one or two that don't have some kind of sentimental you know, value to me. So I, I'm just not, I usually don't trade Zippos. It's usually like knives for knives. I will accept Zippos in trade when I'm trading knives, but um, yeah, I don't think there's anything for, tra uh, for trade at the moment. I will do a sale video again in the future, and this time when I do a sale video, I will let everyone know beforehand, because everyone always gets mad. <laughs> like, hey man, I know you're going to sell something, I just bought something. I would have bought from you. But uh, yeah, there will probably be a sale video in the future, but no trades anytime that I, I have planned, put it that way. <laughs> so, um, let's see. The next one here, oh, also I'll recommend for Andrew to look on eBay. eBay is a great source for used Zippos. You can get them as cheap as two, three bucks. Some, I'd say the average price for a used Zippo on eBay is anywhere from like five to ten dollars. Uh, but of course you can get new ones and you can get really rare ones and all kinds of stuff. So if you can't find them at your store, you know, locally in your town, look online, look on eBay. And uh, it, it sounds like you're a little bit younger if your parents allow you to shop on the, on the internet uh, for Zippos. Uh, but they're afraid of using their cards or something, you know, just get it yourself a uh, a prepaid um, visa or something, you know, so you don't have to worry about them being worried about you buying stuff online. So, But make sure, of course, you have permission from them to do that. Okay, so the next one says open on camera, uh, if possible. Yes, it is possible. And this is coming from, oh, Andrew in Fargo. I think I got a letter from Andrew before. Let's see. All right. Make sure we're, oh, something else. Two small pieces of paper. Let's see, contains my email. Okay, good. Thank you for putting it on a separate paper so I don't show it on camera. And this one says, add on to the letter. All right, it's a PS. Let's read the letter first. Okay. Oop. Dear Jeff, uh, hello, how are you? I'm doing good, thank you. Uh, I hope you are enjoying the married life. I am, I am enjoying the married life. Uh, I also hope Gus is fat and happy. He is happy, he's actually, it's funny because a lot of people, especially in different countries who don't see his breed of dog, they always say, oh my God, your dog's so fat. And believe it or not, Gus is the perfect weight. He is 55 pounds for his age, being four years old, English Bulldog, that is a perfect weight. Most English Bulldogs his age are in the 60 plus you know, pound range. So coming from a vet, he is totally healthy and not fat. He's actually pretty ripped. It's just he has a lot of skin folds, so you can't see his musculature. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I've been subscribed to your channel for about two or three months. And I really love your videos. They have a great quality and I enjoy watching them. On your triple EDC video, when you thought the slide on your Glock, I think, uh, was on... Uh, but it wasn't, kept me laughing for or five minutes. Um, anyways, now to the real meat of my letter. I have saved up enough money as I am looking to purchase a uh, Browse Blade Silent Soldier uh, version two with a clip paint, um, but I am finding it hard to find. Uh, I was in Minneapolis uh, for personal reasons and my dad, uh, my dad had to do some errands and he dropped me off at Gander Mountain. I wandered around finding myself in the knife uh, section when I saw that they had the, the Sog Brass Blades um, Snarl version one. Uh, I thought uh, they might have the Silent Soldier. So I flagged down an assistant 
And I know where this is going. He's not going to know jack squat about the knives. Unfortunately, even in like cool places like Gander Mountain and, you know, you go to um, some of the other big, big stores out there, um, Cabela's, you know, unfortunately, not, not a lot of people know about knives in general. I think if you're going to be in the hunting section and you're going to be helping customers with knives, you should probably have knife collecting as a hobby. I mean, it's just me, but anyway, um, uh, let's see. He was extremely rude, being very unhelpful. That's unfortunate, but I kind of knew that was coming. Uh, I tried to explain what I wanted, and he mostly just put me off as a stupid kid. I'm 14. Uh, yeah, I'm 14. Uh, I've been into knives ever since I can remember. My first knife was a little folding lockback uh, Carhartt. Uh, the attendant was very disrespectful, but I saw him being very nice to an older man, 64-ish or so, who was looking for a 22 pistol. This was very upsetting. I attempted to talk to their manager, but he refused to get him. I went to a different employee and told him my situation. He agreed with me and called the manager. Once the manager uh, came and uh, heard my story, he didn't believe me. Uh, he again just put me off as as a kid, and I'm quoting him here. Uh, let's see, a bratty, uh, bratty kid uh, who is up to no good. Uh, but he put he put the let me put this straight. I have been very patient. I haven't raised my voice or anything like that. After the manager left, the employee that helped me apologized in in name of the store and asked if there was anything he could do and I said not for me uh, but just get helpful and friendly to other customers. Uh, the main reason for my letter is to ask ask you where I could purchase the Silent Soldier version 2 with a clip with clip paint. I'm assuming you just mean like a black version. Uh, if you have one you're willing to trade it or are you willing to trade it? In, ca in case I somehow get the name wrong it's the one illustrated. Yeah, okay. Let's see your picture uh, to the right. I apologize for my uh, poor art skills, uh, but that's roughly it. I'm searching for the end of the page, so this is where I'm starting to get the end of the page. This is where I say goodbye. Wait, I recently got the CRKT Minimalist um, after your review, and I love it. Okay, seriously, now goodbye. Uh, it's been fun, Andrew. And this is, here's the PS. The PS is I'm also looking for a quality folding knife under 50 bucks. Thank you in advance for all your help. I absolutely love your channel and wish the best of luck in all your en endeavors. Keep those videos coming, Andrew. Well, first of all, uh, thanks for telling the story because, <laughs> you know, I, I apologize in advance because, I mean, your handwriting's fine. I know a lot of people are like, oh, my handwriting sucks and that's why I, like, I stumble reading it. I just have a hard time reading handwritten letters. It doesn't matter how good it is or how bad it is, so don't take it personally. Um, but, uh, yeah, unfortunately, I don't have a Silent Soldier 2 trade right now. Uh, I do own two of them, and I love them both, and I do use them both in between using the actual um, custom minimalist that I have. Um, you're not going to find a Browse Blades in a store. So that's the, that's the first thing. You're going to have to look online. I would recommend looking on Blade Forms in their uh, trade section, see if you could trade for one, or look in their sales section. Um, Blade HQ carries them. Of course, you can you, you can contact Jason directly. That would honestly that would be the best thing. Jason is a really nice guy. Um, go to BrassBlades.com. You know, find his contact information and send him an email, and just say, hey, look, I'm looking for this knife. Um, what dealers do you ship them out to? And and you can see if there's any in stock. Unfortunately, his stuff is very popular and it doesn't last very long when it is for sale. But your best bet on the secondary market would be Blade Forms or maybe Knife Forms. All right, let's see. Now, a good recommendation for a $50 or under knife. That is a very, very hard question to ask because there's so many factors as to, you know, what you may be looking for in a knife. You know, off the top of my head, I honestly would recommend looking at some of the uh, San Remu stuff because it's really, really good. Um, besides that, if you never had a Spyderco Bird model knife like the Cara Cara, uh, look into those too. They're very cool. I've always recommended uh, K-Bar Dozier's. I mean, they're awesome knives for 20 bucks. Um, of course, Spyderco Tenacious. There, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Uh, there's some CRKT offerings that are really cool. 
I would just, I would read, read on blade forums, look at recent posts, what people are getting, what people are talking about, and if something appeals to you, look it up, and if you can find it for less than 50 bucks, there you go. You know, it's hard to recommend good knives because there's just too many good knives. And some people buy really good knives and don't like them just because of their personal preferences or needs in a knife. So I wish I could help you out more, but I would, I would check out some of those that I, I mentioned and, uh, and just check out the forums and see what's, what's hot lately and what people are liking. So anyway, we got one more thing to open. Whoa, that was my cell phone. That's the uh, <laughs> CNN app telling me there's breaking news. Um, or it's, I also have an app for my uh, local um, like news station too, so any local news pops up. Anyway, um, open on camera. This is coming from Josh in Canada. So let's open it up, see what we got. Try not to cut into my table. All right. Oh, look at this. That's cool. I've never seen a uh, paracord keychain like that. That's interesting. All right. Let's see what this says. Is this uh, an address or something? No. It says, I made this paracord grenade. That's pretty damn cool. I've never seen that before, a paracord grenade. Cool. <laughs> it's amazing what some people are doing with paracord. I've seen all kinds of stuff like I've never seen anything like that, though. That's interesting. Okay. Uh, dear Jeff, my name is Josh, and I'm 10 years old. I live in Canada. I love knives, and after I saw the video... Uh, about that 11 year old that sent you a letter. Uh, I know you didn't have a problem with uh, Kids having knives. Yeah, no, I don't I don't have a problem with kids having knives um, You know for hundreds of years kids brought knives to school and there weren't any problems because knives are tools not weapons <laughs> But I'm not gonna get into a rant about that. I will say that I think that kids deserve a chance with knives, but there are exceptions uh, and I think it is completely 100% up to the parents or guardians of that child to dictate whether that person is mature enough to carry a knife. I know seven-year-old boys that could carry a knife with no incidents whatsoever, and I also know 18-year-old boys who probably shouldn't have a nail file because they're gonna get in trouble with it. So it is very subjective, and it is definitely on a case-by-case -case basis. All right, so let me, let me put that out there. I think kids could have knives, but not all of them. Just depends on how mature that child is. So, anyway. Um, uh, anyway, I'm saving up for uh, the Kershaw Leak and the Schrade SCH A3CB. Uh, I would, or would you recommend any other good knives in the $30 to $70 range? Uh, I also have a knife recommendation for you. Uh, look around for the Rothko Bush Knife. Uh, it's a good, good sturdy knife, and I've beaten and beaten it. Not a scratch because it has a strong uh, wash blade. Oh, a stone wash blade. I got mine at a local army surplus. I don't think it will be easy to find. Love your videos. Keep doing what you're doing, or what you do, and have a nice day. Uh, from Josh in Canada. All right, so thank you, Josh. I really appreciate the letter. I also appreciate the grenade. It's very cool, something different. Um, also, congratulations, or you know, pre-congratulations on the new knives. The Kershaw Leak is very cool. Also, the Schrade is a cool knife to get. Uh, I haven't personally seen that Rothko before. I do, however, have a, an army surplus store uh, close to me, uh, there's one in Honesdale, Pennsylvania, that has a actually a very extensive clothing section. Uh, Christina picked a very cool um, military surplus jacket that she's using for winter, which is pretty badass. I might even do a video on it in the future. But um, but yeah, I mean, I'll keep my eyes peeled out for it. I don't think I'll find it online. I mean, I'm not looking for it specifically, but I will remember to to check it out next time I go to the uh, surplus store, see if they happen to have it. I know they carry a bunch of knives. I took a quick peek in the case. And unfortunately, most places I go and I see a knife case, like 90% of the time, it's kind of like, wah, wah. they're all like m -techs and, you know, really just stuff I'm not personally interested in. I always take a look anyway, but this particular one that I'm talking about in Honesdale, they do have a couple uh, name brand stuff. I didn't really see, like, the prices on it, so I don't know what the prices are like. But I can say, if you're ever in the area, Honesdale, Pennsylvania, that Army Surplus store... Uh, is is pretty cool. Definitely huge selection of clothing, military clothing stuff. 
Okay guys, so I'm adding in some more uh, unboxing stuff. These are actually two different things that I had uh, unboxed, but I had lost the footage for. Um, now the first thing here on the left is a letter that I got in the mail with a torn package, and unfortunately the package was completely empty, but I want to read the letter to you anyway. Um, this says, Dear Jeff, uh, it's been awesome watching your videos over the years. I subscribed when you were maybe at 10,000 subs. I love your EDC videos and using some adaptations of your theories. However, it is uh, nice to watch your knife reviews and lighter tricks. Uh, now that you probably noticed the Betty Boop knife, which un unfortunately I didn't find anything in the package at all. Um, uh, let's see. You probably noticed the Betty Boop knife, uh, which is broken. Sad face. Um, well, it didn't have any anyone else to turn to uh, except you. And I was hoping you could take a look uh, and or fix it. Look at it and or fix it. There are two other little things in here as well. One is part of my EDC, the other your holiday present. The silver is yours, uh, so the hot so so is the hot sauce. But I thought it, it would be cool uh, to add that to your EDC, uh, some hot sauce. Never know when you might use it. Sincerely, Ben. Now, Ben, I really appreciate sending the letter and stuff, but unfortunately, I don't know what happened in the mail, but all I got was the letter. Um, but if you did send something, I really appreciate it. Uh, I really hope that whatever was in there would be found in returns because, you know, it sounds like you had a broken knife that you want to fix and return to you. Um, so hopefully, I mean, you never know what's going to happen. It's unfortunate. Sometimes people send things, not necessarily in your case, but sometimes people send things in padded envelopes and they get chewed up through the machines when they get sorted and whatever contents are in there are completely lost. But uh, anyway, I mean, I really appreciate you uh, writing, Ben. Hopefully that'll show up. Um, I have another letter here with a, a pile of stuff. Let's see. Okay. Dear Jeff and Christina, first off, congrats on your marriage. Happy birthday and happy holidays. Thank you very much. Uh, I've been subscribed to your channel for some years now and have been hooked. I think that the viewers and myself uh, included would like to see more story time, gun and shooting, prepping, and survival videos. I don't think that you've ever made a video showing your bug out bag or whatever you want to call it. I would like to see what you have uh, so I can get more ideas of what to put in uh, mine. If you don't have one made already for yourself and Christina, can you make a video of that? Uh, all in all, keep the videos coming, and I've added a couple of little gifts for you. Uh, review any of the items if you want. I try to put two of everything for you and Christina. I hope you enjoy, and happy holidays, Eric. Well, thank you very much, Eric. I really appreciate it. Um, we do actually have a video on both of our Bob bags. It was a it was a Max Edition video. Uh, I don't recall the exact title for that, but I do plan on doing some more bug out stuff in the future. I know there's been a lot of requests lately for. You know, prepping videos in general, more food reviews on survival food, more showing different items, um, you know, pieces of gear and kit that would be good for uh, prepping or a bug out bag, stuff like that. So, I mean, I have a lot of stuff planned. Um, you know, maybe some of it during the cold months would be a cool thing to show, especially, you know, some items that I think that everyone should have in their car during the cold winter months. Obviously, you know, if you get caught out in the middle of uh, a snowstorm, uh, it's a lot different than being caught, you know, in a you know, let's say in the middle of summer or something. So hopefully some more videos on that in the near future. But I want to show real quick uh, some of the stuff that Eric sent. He sent some Mexican candy, which I don't think I've ever had this baboon candy. Um, but I know from my experience, most Mexican candy is really good if you took away the um, chili powder. I don't know why, but they put chili powder on the outside of all their candy. A lot of the stuff normally would taste good, but it tastes horrible to me covered in chili powder. Even though I like chilies, I don't want it on my candy. But uh, anyway, also some um, earplugs, which is awesome. Christina does use these all the time, so she thanks you very much for those. I got some frog lube. A lot of people wanted me to try frog lube. So I have two little, uh, you know, little like one-time use packets, which is very cool. I'll probably throw these actually in my kit, speaking of the bug out bag stuff. Also got the, uh, the patch. Uh, I think that's, I forget how to pronounce this. Uh, Milan mm, Labe Labe I forget how to pronounce it but I think it's Greek if I'm not mistaken and, and it basically translates to uh, come and take them so it's a second amendment uh, reference but very cool I will certainly put this on my uh, on my bags and the last thing which is actually pretty cool I haven't seen this before uh, Orion or Orion they do all kinds of road flares and stuff and they're calling these search and rescue campfire starter flares so basically, they're just, they're literally a shortened 
flare that's probably like five and a half, six inches, something like that. And they're individual flares, which they're suggesting you can use to start fires in emergency. Of course, you can use any kind of flare for signaling. So just really interesting concept having a short flare for your bag. I love these things. If you can find these at Walmart or Target or, or something similar, um, you know, let everyone know down in the description box where you can buy these besides buying them online, because I would definitely buy a bunch more to throw in all my bags. That is super cool. You don't necessarily want, you know, a big long flare, nor do you have the room for one. If you're camping uh, or even if you're just hiking around, uh, you're the room and weight in your bag is very limited and most people wouldn't consider carrying flares because they're just too big and bulky, too long, too heavy. Having a shortened version of a flare would be uh, pretty cool. So I love that idea, really like it. So anyway, that's all. Thanks for watching guys. Hope you have an awesome day and I will see you soon. Take care.